Imagine a human-like species that lived hundreds of thousands of years ago, straddling Africa and parts of Europe from around 700,000 to 200,000 years ago. We call them Homo heidelbergensis. They were around during the Middle Pleistocene, which was a time of significant change on Earth. Named after a jawbone found near Heidelberg, Germany, these ancient humans have puzzled scientists for years. They're often thought to have evolved from Homo erectus and are believed to have given rise to both Homo sapiens, that's us, in Africa, and the Neanderthals in Europe. However, how exactly this transition happened is still a big question mark in the study of human evolution. Even defining this species precisely is a bit of a challenge. Scientists debate which fossils should be included in the Homo heidelbergensis group and which should not. Despite these uncertainties, Homo heidelbergensis is generally seen as a brainier and more inventive species compared to its predecessors. We've found fairly sophisticated tools associated with them, suggesting they might have been pretty clever hunters. They might have even worked together in groups for hunting, which hints at the beginnings of social cooperation among early humans. And the story of Homo heidelbergensis begins in 1907 in a sandpit near Heidelberg, Germany. Imagine the excitement when workers stumbled upon a robust jawbone that looked like it belonged to an unknown species of human. After studying it, a scientist named Otto Schotensack decided it was different enough to warrant its own species, which he named Homo heidelbergensis the following year. Recently, scientists have dated this jawbone to around 600,000 years ago, placing it in a warm period called the Mies 15 interglacial. This suggests that whoever owned that jawbone didn't freeze instantly upon reaching the region where it was found. And if you stepped into a cave inhabited by Homo heidelbergensis during the Middle Pleistocene, you'd probably notice they looked a bit like bulkier versions of us. They were more robust than modern humans, but had brains almost as large as ours, averaging around 1,200 milliliters or more, which is bigger than Homo erectus. Their faces were broad and heavily constructed, similar to Homo erectus, but with less pronounced brow ridges and more vertical noses, similar to ours. A skull from Bodo, Ethiopia, dating back around 600,000 years, is a good example of this mix of features. Fossils from Africa, like those from Broken Hill in Zambia and Elensfontein in South Africa, as well as those from Europe, such as Petrolona in Greece, Arago in France, and the jawbone from Mauer, Germany, all share similar characteristics. As we uncover more fossils from the Middle Pleistocene, we may get a clearer picture of how Homo heidelbergensis evolved into Homo sapiens in Africa and Neanderthals in Europe. For example, the site of Boxgrove in England, dating back around 500,000 years, provides clues about their robustness and body proportions, hinting at the adaptations of later Neanderthals. And Homo heidelbergensis were hunter-gatherers, adept at surviving in various environments. Some groups thrived in the stable and warm terrains of Africa, while others traversed Europe, navigating through changing ice sheets. They likely used caves as shelters, organizing them more systematically and using hearths for warmth and cooking. Although the use of fire had been around for a while, Homo heidelbergensis became more accustomed to it, using it habitually by around 400,000 years ago, even in colder regions where it was particularly useful. Their toolkits were more advanced than those of their predecessors, Homo erectus, belonging to the later Aculean industry. These tools were more refined and symmetrical, including hand axes, picks, and cleavers, indicating a more sophisticated lifestyle. And the tools crafted by Homo heidelbergensis weren't just for processing food and materials, they also made them formidable hunters, climbing higher up the food chain. Evidence from sites like Boxgrove in England, dating back around 500,000 years, suggests that Homo heidelbergensis hunted large animals like horses and rhinoceroses. Thin and extensively flaked flint bifaces found alongside animal remains with cut marks indicate that these ancient humans were skilled at hunting and butchering. But it gets even more thrilling at Schoningen in Germany. Here, archaeologists unearthed eight expertly crafted wooden throwing spears created over 300,000 years ago. These spears were found alongside the remains of numerous horses, many of which showed signs of butchery. This suggests that Homo heidelbergensis systematically hunted these large animals. Crafting these spears required careful planning, and bringing down such dangerous prey would have demanded coordination and sophisticated communication among the hunters. This hints at a social structure among Homo heidelbergensis that was likely more widespread than previously thought. Although wood typically doesn't survive well over time, 
the advanced nature of Homo heidelbergensis stone tools across different regions suggests that wooden tools may have been an important part of their toolkit. If so, the social implications seen at Schoningen could apply to Homo heidelbergensis populations across their range, and pinpointing where Homo heidelbergensis fits in the grand scheme of human evolution can be a bit like solving a puzzle with missing pieces. There's a variety of ideas floating around, but one scenario seems to stand out based on both anatomical and genetic evidence. Around 700,000 years ago, Homo heidelbergensis emerged from Homo erectus. In Africa, they were part of a gradual transition into the earliest Homo sapiens around 200,000 years ago. Fossil finds from places like Omo Kibish in Ethiopia and Irhoud in Morocco showcase this transition. But heidelbergensis didn't just stay in Africa. They spread through Western Eurasia, adapting to the challenging environment. Sometime after 700,000 years ago, they appeared north of the major European mountains. As they adapted to colder conditions, they evolved into the Neanderthals, with distinct facial features and a stockier build, emerging around 200,000 years ago. But wait, there's more complexity to this story. In 2008, a finger bone found in the Denisova cave in Siberia belonged to a separate species dubbed the Denisovan. Genetic evidence shows they're a sister species to the Neanderthals, sharing a common ancestor with them and Homo sapiens. Another intriguing find comes from the Chama de los Huesos site in Spain. Fossils there, at least 430,000 years old, display some Neanderthal-like features, sparking debate about whether they're proto-Neanderthals, Heidelbergensis on their way to becoming Neanderthals. Mitochondrial DNA retrieved from one of these fossils in 2014 showed it was closely related to the lineage leading to the Denisovan. The Pleistocene period was indeed a complex tapestry of human evolution, with Homo heidelbergensis playing a pivotal role in the branching out of different human species.